the Shutterwalk Shaman as well. And that and is the case. That is the ban. Um, I think that, that the Paladin is a strong ban because a lot of No Hands Gamers uh, lineup is quite weak to it. But I think that this deck is definitely more beatable than Shutterwalk Shaman is. And that could just be my head telling me that. Um, I haven't run the numbers or anything, but we're getting into it. Even Paladin banned away from No Hands Gamer. And game number one, Odd Paladin versus Taunt Druid. Yeah, this is uh, going to be very tough for No Hands if he doesn't have the removal to deal with it. But look at this early curve, Wild Growth Swipe, Mass Ogar. That is pretty much a winning formula, but still has to have some headway. Because there's this one thing that I've learned about Odd Paladin, is that even if you have the best removal tools, Defile, Swipe, Dustbreaker, they find a way to still win, despite the fact that you can clear them two or three times. Yeah, you may be able to keep them off the ideal buff turn, but it's really tough to just outright stop Odd Paladin. And it pretty much just keeps going the entirety of the time. So one of the big pickups I'm looking for from No Hands Gamer is uh, Nourish. I think Nourish is absolutely the best draw in the deck at this point. With Master Oakheart, Swipe, and Wild Growth, the goal is get to Master Oakheart. If he gets to Master Oakheart and he's not dead on board, that oftentimes can be enough to outright win the game. And, uh, you know, already there's some stuff that I want to talk about here. Odd Paladin, I've realized, is a, is a deck that you can't rush turn one. It is actually so crucial to the deck. Oh, sorry, if you're on the coin. If you're on the coin, it is actually so important how you map out the first two, three turns. And this is the fastest I've seen Planet Hunter play all weekend. And this is also a matchup that is, at least statistically, pretty split down the middle because of how decisive one deck can win over the other. Yeah, and so, you know, kind of talking about the Nourish, you know, supplemental to that is Oaken Summons as well. I mean, this puts a big brick road, uh, you know, in front of Planet Hunter's game plan. It's, it's like a brick wall. Why did I say brick road? Brick road would pave the way. Um, this really starts to slow him down a lot and, you know, make those ideal buff turns not so ideal anymore. And so the pickup of Corridor Creepers, I oh think, is goodness. really important because that helps him redevelop as he's going to be making these sacrifices throughout. Uh, but it's these these are the kinds of turns that No Hands Gamer needs to get to that Master Roll card. It can very easily get out of control. And, you know, Planet Hunter is not forced to attack in this scenario. It can just build up a big board, force a swipe from No Hands Gamer if it's there, uh, and threaten just with the level up alone. Yeah, but... Mm. The level up is just non-existent to in the face of a swipe that can clear the entire board. That's what the creepers are for. Go around two. Yeah, and and so so here's like the thing that I was thinking about is if you if you spend the early time trying to establish the board presence with um, your early game minions, then you don't give your opponent two swipe very cleanly. Like if you're able to play raid leader, and then you're able to trade efficiently on board, and then you can set up better quarter creepers, and then your opponent has to react off of it. The reason why this matchup seems to be a lot more even is because Taunt Druid does not have the availability of playing Spreading Plague or Malfurion the Pestilent to set up their defenses. These are some of the best cards that are core to Druid, and it's because they're so dependent on Witching Hour and Hadronox to get their big Taunt Dru uh, walls up. So, in my opinion, Odd Pounds need to rush down Taunt Druid as fast as they can, as opposed to just kind of rest on their laurels and hope that their synergy can carry them through like a coin level up. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's a good point as well, is that when you're playing against Malagos Druid, uh, you know, swipes are demanded in order to handle boards. And that gives you a very strange end game scenario where I think Odd Paladin uh, a lot of times has a stronger end game than Malagos Druid does. You know, the ability to build up so much substantial value from threatening your opponent uh, means that once Vine Cleaver hits and you you know you have Fungal Mancers, you have level ups, you have all your top end, it's a very different style of game. You can really wear on their ability to just remove your entire board turn after turn. Right. Uh, and Taunt Druid doesn't have that liberty, but it does have a very different end game plan of attack where it's attacking with minions and not with spells. So I do agree with you that Planet Hunter doesn't have the same amount of time, but the defenses from No Hands Gamer aren't quite as good as Malagos Druid has either. So, yeah. you know, to me, that also spells out a, a plan to rush them down as well. But right yeah. now, this is like a you know, not killing the uh, Ironwood Golem at this point may come back to haunt Planet I, Hunter. I think so. And, and I think what's really hard to deal with, too, is that the advantage is kind of snowballed at one point. If you can't kill, like, you know, one taunt minion, then you really can't kill the second one. And then they start dropping Primordial Drakes, and then they summon a Sleepy Dragon. And unless you have that Void Ripper on command, or on demand, rather, it's going to end really ugly. And so a lot of times this matchup might feel extremely one-sided, but largely it's because I feel like those first few turns are really important. Yeah. Now granted, No Hands Gamer also got pretty much the ideal start. He got Wild Growth, Oaken Summons, and Swipe, but they're not gonna always have that every time. 
And I think play, Planet Hunter played extremely optimistically, saying, you don't have any of those things, and then just got punished. Yeah. It's, it, to me, it was like uh, the Oaken Summon's turn. I think that Raid Leader looks fine on that turn. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, No Hands Gamer isn't prompted to really be able to do much on that turn four. You know, it's going to be like a hero power a lot of times. Um, or on that turn five, rather. It's going to be like a hero power a lot of times if it's not Nourish. So I think he's just really caught in a tough spot. We're going to see two more yeah, Ironwood Golems. This is bad news. And, you know, the whole point of this also, this is all just cherry on top for No Hands because what does he really care about? He cares about that far left card, Master Oakheart. Well, and the, the closer he gets to it, the more likely he is to win. Not killing uh, one of the Silverhand recruits. Uh, you know, it's about the same thing as killing the Boisterous Bard. You know, there's a little bit more health offered on the uh, on the level up turn here. So I, th I think that I might have been in favor still of killing a Silverhand recruit because two of them get buffed to four health in this scenario. And you could have limited that mm -hmm. to one, but then the Boisterous Bard's poking through. That's, that's a weird, like, you know, flip-floppy interaction that you need to look at it could down the road. be him looking at the the use of coin like it's been held for so long and now planet hunter has revealed that the level up was there the entire time yeah this this, this turn, is really inefficient it, it the turn eight really is what i'm worried about for no hands gamer i mean he still needs i think something a little bit behind this to fully secure it sure but you know looking very strong overall with even a turn eight if they just take a bunch of damage uh, the O-Cart, I think, is enough to, to really bring it home. Yeah, the, I think it could end up disastrous if No Hands Gamer specifically picks up a second Dragon Hatcher next turn. Or draws the dragons back to back. And like, then draws, like, another dragon. Yeah, there's only one Sleepy Dragon. I'm sorry, there's two Sleepy Dragons, and there's two Primordial Drakes, and two copies of Dragon Hatcher. So, you know, drawing all the dragons back to back to back, Oof. not really much of a worry. And the Hadronox being in hand, I'm not too worried about that either. It is just that this turn is abysmal. Yeah, and you can see that uh, Planet Hunter made his trade specifically with Promoyo Drake in mind. Very understandable. And uh, this should tell you everything you need to know if you're the Odd Paladin player. Hero Power Pass. Ooh. That offers uh, a pretty interesting turn wow. with, uh, with the Raid Leader. Yes. So Raid Leader's a static buff that's always granting plus one attack. When Void Ripper flops those around, that one health gets shifted to the health, and that's a permanent shift at that point, and then it reapplies the static buff to give all minions in play plus one attack again. So the uh, Raid Leader Void Ripper here does offer a bit more health as well, so that these minions aren't just straight up trading, they're, they're staying alive. And the Q losing power, also another uh, really nice thing too. That's a lot of damage that just got pushed. And also sees no Primordial Drake, so he knows Master Oakheart's most likely what's coming out. Primordial Drake, but it's too late for that. He oh, needed yeah. the you, previous turn. You've got to use the Oakheart here. Except it's only going to pull out the Dragon Hatcher and the, and the Trog because there's no more there's Iron Gold. There's an Iron Gold left. That was cute. Oh, you're right. It was He's cute. also got I the Trog Gloom Eater feature in here and yeah. can trade off the cube to make two more... Uh, cubes in this scenario uh, to continue to fight for this board position. So, you know, the key here is that, you know, we're looking at the split between Primordial Drake and Sleepy Dragon, and I'm, I don't have it calculated just yet, but Sleepy Dragon might be necessary. It's a six damage push that Planet Hunter gets, and I don't think he's got enough to keep going after that. I think it's been squelched. Yeah, I, I can count seven damage if you use the Ac Acros Veteran. But it's you're pretty much spot on. It's very difficult to keep this board under control because you're first of all tempted to kill the uh, the Dragon Hatcher. I think you got to kill the Dragon Hatcher. Right. Well, I mean, you can always take the risk of hoping that they don't have any more dragons. Given that they pass on eight, Hello? Hello? it's like they could be holding a lot of dragons in hand. Definitely could be like a double sleepy dragon in hand, but man, that would be another primordials in deck. Right? I just can't get over how much mileage like the Ironwood Golems have gotten yeah. this, this game. Uh, you know, I said Nourish uh, was probably the most important draw, and honestly, in hindsight, it was it was certainly Oaken Summons uh, was the critical draw. Yeah, 
kill off that Dragon Hatcher. That's done so. But yeah. this looks like a squeaky clean board. Yep. This is exactly what dragons should do. They should breathe fire and eat things, and in Primordial Drake's case, do oh, both. Yeah. Drake hits the board, and that's going to be 13 damage the other way with the option of no hands for drawing another card with the wow growth, and that is the end of the game. There's just no possible way for Odd Paladin to lock, to come back in this. They are locked out. Too much damage, and not a single card can change that unless it's Stonehill Defender into a Sunkeeper Tarim, and even then it still wouldn't be enough. I believe Stonehill is not included uh, in the, the deck for... For Planet Hunter. Yeah. Uh, there is no Stone of Defender. Yeah. So oftentimes when you're running uh, the Raid Leaders with a Divine Favor and Boisterous Bard package, you cannot afford to uh, to run Stonehill Defender. Boisterous Bard, because it offers you trade potential in the mirror match, is often the replacement of where Stonehill Defender would be. Stonehill, yeah. you know, pretty strong in the mirror match uh, if you have any amount of board secured. Boisterous Bard, though, oftentimes offers that same potential. That's game one. No hands gamer takes it with his taunt druid. And taunt druid definitely has uh, flexed a little bit this tournament, taking advantage of other druids like Maligos or token druids and getting big wins there. Um, beating up a lot of those like mid to late game centric decks that just can't get past its walls like De Death Rattle Hunter. It's been uh, pretty interesting to see taunt druid make that comeback. <clears throat> of course, we also saw Town Druid completely flail. Uh, you know, this lineup from, from, from Planet Hunter. I think that it's still a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot of vulnerability. You know, this matchup can get really dicey if you don't have the early removal. And that hand from No Hands Gamer is looking pretty oh darn goodness. solid. That is one of the primo hands I think that you can have from No Hands Gamer's perspective. as good as it gets. You have every form of major AoE. You change the Godfrey to a Void Lord, and I agree with you. That's as good as it gets. Yeah, you'll draw it, I'm sure. Now, this is still a pretty decent hand for Planet Hunter. Lost in Jungle with Level Up and Vine Cleaver are really powerful tools as well. Oh, massive. That is so good for No Hands Gamer. Mm. Oh, Busting a Might, though. Yeah, a little, a little greed there. It's going to be the punish, and it, it doesn't even have to be Blessing of Mites. It could be a Raid Leader. It could be, um, it could be Blessed Maul. But uh, the whole point is that you force your opponent to extend onto the board, and then you AOE them down. Yeah. So even if Planet Hunter goes for Blessing of Might and trades into this Doomsayer, it's going to be fine because No Hands Gamer has the the file on the, the other end. Yeah, Void Ripper I think is really the heaviest hitting one uh, when it comes to fighting against Doomsayer. Yeah, uh, Blessing of Might not only you know extends into the board in a, you know. A, a weird way, but it also limits the amount of damage. So, like, No Hands Gamer uses that as future calculations, and the extend into the board, you know, he's got he's got an ability to clear against that. Now, the question for me is, do you clear this turn or do you take a turn off and wait? And, um, you know, with no demon in hand, I'm much less apt to uh, want to play the skull on curve with coin, and with Hellfire in hand, a lot of times you're okay with taking some amount of damage, and so. I think because the Hellfire's there with the Defile, you know, that's really the one-two punch there. If you have both of them, sometimes you can wait for your opponent to use a small buff and then try to Hellfire afterwards. You know, because look at, like, this turn, for instance. You yeah, know, this is still pretty scary. And this is, this is Odd Paladin in a nutshell. The first clear is often uh, more of a necessity than it is um, a stabilization tool. Yeah, and no actual demon to pull. So you know, everything you were saying about the fact that Lord Godfrey needed to be a Void Lord or some other demon was spot on, and that is some weak AOE being displayed right now. Yeah, now Planet Hunter, I think, uh, you know, playing it for the direct thought of level up, uh, it cuts the buff potential in half. It goes from Fungal Mancer and level up that your opponent can have to just having Fungal Mancer your opponent can have to really punish you. But now is out of AOE. And this is what Zilliax is for. It's to provide that little bit of oomph that gains you back some of that health mm -hmm. and gets you to your next turn. Yeah, it's a great cornerstone card. It just helps you stay grounded in the mid game, even though you're trying to put out giants and put out doom guards and void lords. It just gives you some stability. Yeah, if you're playing a, a deck that has like an end game uh, explosivity that you're trying to take advantage of and you need to scale up the mana curve, uh, if you're not running Zilliax, that's pretty much a tool that, that does this job very well. 
play it. Yeah, I agree here with the hero power. You don't want to just overextend into the level up just to get a little bit of damage. You want to just keep threatening your opponent with that level up. Yeah, and to me, this is like one of the toughest turns that No Hands Gamer is going to have, you know. Uh, if you coin Godfrey, it's right into a Vine Cleaver turn. If you play Mountain Giant, your opponent's threatening to have a, you know, a ton of buffs going on. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm quite surprised wow. with no Mountain Giant in that scenario. You know, even if Mountain Giant gets, like, level up traded into or whatever, like, that's a pretty fantastic outcome for Mountain Giant, I'd say. This Argent Squire is oh. also such a liability because it enables the Godfrey. Yeah, I mean... That's the thing, is No Hands Gamer was able to, you know, sustain some amount of life total to get this done. It might wow. look nice, but this Godfrey yeah. is just going to wipe the board. Uh, th I think that this was, uh, you know, by some means a, a Vine Cleaver turn, because if your opponent's going to have a yeah, board sweep, that means they have to leave the, the Vine Cleaver there. You get to redevelop again. In this situation, it's follow up with Vine Cleaver, but you've already used a level up in that scenario. So the second level up is where uh, Planet Hunter's going to have to rely on to get this done. Still is a very reasonable board, though, with Corridor Creeper and Vine Cleaver. And an Arts and Squire. That's ex isn't that exactly the same reload as the previous wipe? Well, you stick a Vine Cleaver in play, and yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was just a 2 one one the, the Arts and Squire. He <laughs> positioned it exactly the same, too. <laughs> this is the correct positioning. For Funkle Mancer. No more AoE available, but a spell stun can fully upgrade and remove that quarter creeper. Void Lord. Well, see, that's big now. So now it's going to be more card draw, and the goal for uh, No Hands Gamers to land Void Lord in the safest position possible. And the file also gets picked up. But that Defile is important right now. Yeah. That that needs to be used at the prime opportunity. And when, you know, Planet Hunter has two cards in hand, Divine Favor is certainly a card you need to think about your opponent drawing or having or, you know, whatever it's going to be. If you Defile in this turn, my question is, can you coin out the Skull and not die? There's a Leroy in Planet Hunter's deck, so I don't want to go for that plan. I think that paying nine mana for Void Lord is a totally fine deal. Yeah. Especially because there's no silences really that's ran in Odd Paladin these days. Nope. Void Ripper is the card they use to push through taunts. Most of the strongest taunts right now are low attack and high health, but Void Lord, you know, spits out some some Void Walkers when it's done, so. Wants the extra insurance of healing, so Dark Pack's a minion as well. Completely reasonable, given that No Hands feels like he's in a pretty good position. If he can just outlast the aggression. It doesn't matter if he's a little bit inefficient. Yeah, one of the big issues here is that if he goes for a level up this turn, he's facing that same style of liability as the turn previous, where the Argent Squire ends up being a liability because No Hands Gamer found Second Defile. I'm not going to play around Second Defile here, and I don't think that Planet Hunter should be either. But it's there, and that trade is necessary if you're going to play around Defile. Very wise. Man, that is still a really intimidating board. This, I mean, the Void Lord just chews through so much of it, and that's the second yeah. level up. You know, No Hands Gamer has gotten past some of the toughest cards that Planet Hunters has in the deck. That's right. This absorbs almost all the oh, damage. Wow. wow. That's so a big draw. That sets up, I think, uh, for Defile to still end up being a clear in this position, though. So it would be a trade over of a 1 1. And then you play Fungal Mancer. That 1-1 one, one really needs to go away. Or buffed. I, I'm thinking, like, I don't know if Plant Hunter needs to maximize on this turn. Like, Defile is, the, like, the lone remaining card that can beat you up. The second Hellfire could also do the same thing. And then now you're also starting to worry about Blood River Goldan. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you can't play around the Hellfire, is my thinking on it, but you can play around yeah. the Defile, and that's the 1-1 one, one that's sitting in play. I want that to be gone. Uh, but if you does that mean you're not swinging with the Vine Cleaver? 
And actually, or hero powering? You can play around uh, Hellfire to a certain degree here. It's the Fungal Mancer, you trade in a 3-3, three, three, and then you run the 5-5s five over the 1-3s. Yeah, in that's this position. True. Yeah, you can. Ooh. So he's going to be left with 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's no 3 in play. That's yes, there is. Key. There's a Prince Taldoram. Oh, sorry, but in his mind. Yeah, in his mind right now, there's no three. And Prince Taldoram is the only three, I think, that uh, No Hands Gamer makes in That's That's the natural, Warlock. of course. Yeah, I mean, it has to be a natural three health minion. And, yeah, Prince Taldoram is the only one. So, didn't play, you know, played around Hellfire to a certain degree and played around Defile to the largest degree possible, mm -hmm. I think, other than just not making one ones in that position. Yeah. But this also, if it's the Taldoram Defile turn, Leroy is set up to be a top deck in this situation. Mm -hmm. And now second Tap. Vine Cleaver as well. Oh, wow. Now you can... Can you Lackey in Defile? No, because you still don't guarantee that you have a Void Lord. You might just pull the Doom Guard out. I don't know about that Tap. That Tap is dangerous. Yeah. I would have also been just okay with setting up the, the Skull. Tap sets you up to a second out of the, right. the Vine Cleaver. Now you might just die to the Vine Cleaver. Now, that being said, is your hand good enough to get past just a, a reload from Planet Hunter? And, and I think the answer is no. So the tap does have merit where you go, well, if he has damage, I die. If he doesn't, I have a chance. It's also fair. Baku sometimes gets the job done. She's got quite the bite. Doom Guard wow. increases the chances for Void Lord to come out. Yeah, that's actually a good draw for No Hands Gamer at this point because it increases the Void Lord chance. 50 50 right now to stay alive. Void Lord! Ooh, the fist pump, too. Should he have tapped beforehand? Because um, if he tapped, he could have coined out the Void Lord. Well, what if you. Ah, that's a good point. And he taps last. We'll never know. Oh, Fungal Mancer. I mean, you can't ask for much better off the top of the deck outside of Divine Favor. Nuts right now. I mean, yeah. No Hands needs another draw to stay alive. Odd Paladin has been smushed at every angle. Two Defiles, a Hellfire, Lord Godfrey, two Void Lords. It's still got the board. Hellfire or Blood River Gold'an is what I'm thinking of. Faceless. Okay, so can we? Um, I don't see anything here. I'm trying to like Doom Guard Faceless type of play, like to try and see if you can control the board a little bit. Is he going to Faceless the, the Taunt? <laughs> That's how desperate he is. And he's going to Doom Guard? You Doom Guard, you wipe out the 3-3, three, three, and you wipe out two 1-1s. One, that leaves a 1 2, a 2 2, and a 9 7 it's versus not. two 1 2s and a 3 3 So taunt. a single raid leader win this game? It, it's, yeah, it's the it, raid leader. A, the, a the blessed mall. mall? Any of the malls, I think, does it here. Divine oh! favors three fresh draws. Should No Hands have coined in that situation just to get a card out of hand? Possibly. And I think Void Ripper's enough. Yes, Void Ripper helps get through and raid leader. And that's going to be a game to Odd Paladin and No Hands Gamer. He is stunned. Odd Paladin finds a way. You tell me that this deck is an aggro deck. It has so much capability of playing deep into the, into the game. It is it a pure mid-range deck. It has a lot of aggressive possibilities, but it has you know Silverhand Recruit Dude Paladin in Wild a yeah. lot. And then Odd Paladin rolls around, and people are like, wow, level up is really, really yeah. good. Th then they introduced Baku to the game. That was quite the entrance. The red, the red carpet was magnam magnanimous moment. Let's go into game number three. We have Quest Priest featuring Topsy Turvy, Stone Tusk Boar, and Test Subject OTK up against Kingsbane Rogue. These are two of the decks that have gotten the most resurgence off of Roscon's Rumble, at least based off of uh, the early impressions from archetypes that weren't played really at all into 
making it to tier two and above. Kingsbane Rogue has definitely turned a lot of heads as potentially one of the best uh, rogue decks out there right now, even more reliable than Quest Rogue, which is kind of ubiquitous at this point of being a, a deadly threat for Rogue. And then Priest um, still has a lot of viable options. Dragon Priest is very good. Um, Dragon Control Priest, that is. And uh, Cloning Priest still very solid. But now people are really gravitating towards this Topsy Turvy. Wow. You know, I've, I've said it before in the broadcast, but, you know, I want to reiterate on the point that I've, I've, heard, I've heard some pros say that they think that Topsy Priest is the, the best, best deck. deck. And, you know, my I'm still I'm still not convinced of it, but we're seeing it in the finals. And it wasn't represented in huge numbers this weekend, albeit it, it was still in, in a number of lineups. Um, to me, one of the big things I look at for this deck is its Feast or Famine style of draws in the early game sometimes. Uh, a lot of times the deck just, like, it doesn't have a death rattle chain, and then you're left going, what does my deck do right now? But when you have that early death rattle chain, it's very different. And Dead Ringer is, is you know, a single card that can really piece that together. Uh, with Shadow Visions and with Vivid Night, I'm sorry, with uh, Twilight's Call, it's really easy to duplicate those and find yourself, you know, sticking your life total at 40 with an 88 taunt in the way, uh, you know, pretty early in the game. A lot. Would you like some stats, Admirable? Hit me with them. The highest win rate class this tournament is Warlock at 54, 55%, mainly farming the weaker classes, Warrior, Mage, and Priest, but mainly beating Paladin at 62% clip. I think that's the big thing. The second place is Druid and Shaman, kind of at 51, 52%, and then every other class is below 50%. Rogue, Paladin, Hunter, Warrior, Priest, and Mage, all 49 are below. Yeah, now caveat to that, uh, I think Topsy Priest is, is one of the more difficult decks to play at the moment. Uh, right. It's really demanding of experience and knowledge of how the deck works, and if you really slip up at any step of the way, it can be immensely costly. Um, and so that, I think, is, is one of the reasons why the win rate of the deck is, is, is held down is you, I think you truly need to be at an elite level to be able to pilot this deck I agree. Uh, super well. You don't necessarily need to be an elite at Hearthstone, but you need to be an elite at the deck. I mean, Planet Hunter has been saying on his Twitter, this is, of course, uh, courtesy of Lorinda and all the great stats that he puts on his Twitter, at Lorinda Games, if you guys want to follow along. He said that Topsy Priest is the best deck in the current meta when played well. Uh, although he doesn't feel like this might be reflective of their own play just yet. He says it's the potential to be um, the number one deck if played correctly, which is why people said they get the Grim Patron vibe off of this deck. Not necessarily in terms of the uh, actual deck comparison. They have vastly different play styles in terms of how you prepare for stuff. Just in the nature of their core being. Right. Must play well in order to win much. <laughs> TLDR, get good. <laughs> Go infinite. <laughs> Some people still legitimately say that all the time. Though. When I ask them for advice on how to play certain things, they're like, oh, just get good, Frodan. Yeah, that's what my grandpa always <laughs> told me. He said, get good, Frodan. <laughs> I'm like, why are you calling me Frodan, Grandpa? Planet Hunter draws Dead Ring are really important cards, so all the draws coming together very nicely. Do you want to point out that Priest has been struggling a lot in win rate, particularly due to Rogue? It's only won four out of the 16 games registered so far in the Swiss. Yeah, it definitely is an angle of attack that's very different uh, than you know what Priest is built to handle. You know, right. Priest is running Psychic Screams, Mass Hysterias, Spirit Lashes. Yeah. None Fourth of those century. interact with the weapon at all. And so if No Hands Gamer is able to continue to chain together this King's Bane and keep buffing it, it, it just keeps clocking Planet Hunter turn yeah. after turn. Spirit Lash is the main source of healing outside of Amara. But you have to get to Amara, and you have to set up for Spirit Lashes. And then another problem is that Psychic Scream, for most of their minions, is a good thing for Rogue, because they just get to keep buffing their weapon. Yeah. You, su you shuffle in Captain Greenskin and Toxicologist and the Cutthroat Buccaneer. Guess what? You're Come in back. for even worse attacks later on. Yeah, the other thing, too, is that Vanish. You know, when you're creating board states like this, uh, mm. Vanish has a lot of real merit uh, for pushing just straight-up damage in these scenarios. Uh, oh, uh, no Hands Gamers... Uh, feels confident using uh, the raiding party here because of the Doomerang in hand. Yeah. Yeah, just able to restore it to you know charges. He's trying to get this game done with before Planet Hunter uh, okay. is able to, to get to Amara. I like it's it. It's kind of interesting to me. You know, I figured Vanish would have been the tool to do that. Right. Uh, but that gets your opponent to Amara at that same time. So the thing I was looking at, though, is that you get to attack for seven right here. The weapon would have hit for six, leaving Planet Hunter at ten and you would have a Toxicologist in place. So you wouldn't quite have the damage to get it done. So I think that the development here is right and keep Planet Hunter spending mana on board clear rather than spending mana on getting to Amara. 
You're right. This is the coin psychic scream phase. Which is still a little bit uh, interesting to me why he would commit the raiding party without having the guarantee of having the weapon draw. But considering how aggressive he went and he wanted to use Doomerang and re-equip the King's Bane, it makes sense. Because otherwise, a sprint floating the mana is still okay. Yeah, there's also the potential for Vanish later on where if your opponent is, you know, redevelops big and to play the Amara that turn, the Vanish could return all his minions to hand and maybe you burn a key card instead. Yep, precisely. And this is big time heal. Yep. But still a lot of damage on on No Hands Gamer's side. He's right. not slowing down this turn. It's uh, it Why? Is it, oh, he wanted to kill it. Okay, I was like, why trade in for the extra base? Because he wanted to kill off the uh, the Dread Corsair. What can we do? I guess you can play the test subject number one just to get the Amara in the hand, so that way it's a little proficient, but you miss it on the heal. Yeah, the opportunity cost of heal is something that uh, Planet Hunter has focused on a lot in the games that I've seen, um, and that's something that I have personally not been focusing on in my time playing Topsy Priest. I'm curious, you know, how much that's actually reflecting in in uh, his performance in this tournament thus far. You know, I we've seen him lose one game on stream, I think, with Topsy Priest. I've seen Topsy Priest lose a lot on stream, so I but can't... But not from Planet Hunter. Yeah, that's true. We haven't seen him that much outside of the top eight, so I wish I could tell you more. But according to this, Priest has been losing a lot. Yeah. And there has been a lot of Dragon Priest that's in the tournament. People were thinking about bringing Control Priest to shut down a lot of the Paladin decks. Didn't even go that way. It turns out the you know they don't even beat Paladin that much. Well, they only beat at 55% compared to like the 65% other matchups that they have. Stone Tusk Boar comes into hand, so we are missing a couple of pieces. Radiant Elemental and the Divine uh, Spirit. Divine, divine uh, Spirit and a second Radiant Elemental or a second Vivid Knight. Right. But that can also be compensated by the fact that Wishwood Piper can guarantee pick up that Radiant Elemental since two su test subjects and a Stone Tusk Boar was drawn. Or like when, you know, you go back to 40. <laughs> right. So that's, that is really the question mark on my head there, is uh, if you're going to get Amara the next turn, how important is the heal for two? Maybe to prevent any possible way of dying. Coin Shadow Visions, Topsy Turvy, and Vivid Nightmare, both very valid spells. Oh yeah, Topsy was missing as well. I would say because Radiant Elemental is another draw that you're okay with hitting, and you have a lot more upside of drawing two Radiant Elementals because if you can draw it off the top naturally or you can draw it off of the Witchwood Piper, choose this Vivid Nightmare instead for the flexibility. Yeah, I like the Vivid because there's only one copy of Vivid left, so now you only need one Radiant Elemental, and there's two copies of Topsy Turvy left in the deck, so this actually increases you know, the frequency at which you get to combo, I believe. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I, I, I saw it both ways. It's like Vivid Nightmare counts as a Radiant Elemental anyways, but it's just more flexible. Because you can use it for non-combo stuff. You can use it to just, like, copy another Death Rattle minion, for example. Yeah, I think it does have, uh, you know, its few kicker uses as well. But all in all, taking the Vivid there. Pretty straightforward turn for No Hands Gamer. Deal damage. Okay. Mass Astaire is pretty solid in this spot. No power with shield. Oh, that's the outcome that they needed, too. Yeah. Okay, that ended up working out great. And Plan Hunter passes it back over. No Hands wants to get closer to things like the Valera. That Valera can be timed very well. If you can kind of get a real good sense of the opponent's hand, you might be able to avoid dying and strike back for one turn. That was actually a, like a 16.25% outcome, I think, approximately. It's Re half of repeating, 30. Repeating, of course. <laughs> it's, it's half of 33% because the, the – well, no, no, it's not that because the 2-2 two -two can attack 3-3 three -three first. Ah, excuse me. Right, it's, I don't know how the math works on Mass Hysteria yet. I've never, I haven't seen anyone do that math yet. Uh, and I also, I also don't think it's exactly open either, right? Like no one's commented on the probability of it. I'm, I'm pretty fishing. sure it's just random See, outcomes. So this, this is the thing about the vivid nightmare. Oh, I forgot loot hoarder number two was also a possibility of being drawn because I just saw it being revived, so I assumed that two loot hoarders were uh, already drawn. Yeah, and so it's the with both mm. test subjects and the stone tusk were gone. Okay. The Witchwood Piper draws two drops. So then there's the Loot Hoarder and there's the Radiant okay. Elemental he can draw. And there's Topsy, Topsy so Radiant Elemental is enough to get this done. 
and a Divine Spirit is still needed. Yeah, and Leeching Poison is is not basically not a card in the matchup. You, you never die to not having enough health. It is always a death to Planet Hunter executing combo. He could vanish here as a way to try and uh, fill up the hand size, and then That's exactly what he's going to do. Burn a really important card. There's only one copy of Divine Spirit, by the way. We can see no hands take it right here, essentially. Kingsbane says bye. See you later. Plan Hunter. Okay. Definitely a scary moment. Now, here's the other thing. Witchwood Piper now gets to draw again. I don't know how much hand space you need to execute this. You need a decent amount. Yeah, I like ditching this. Yeah, you just got to get stuff out of hand. Yeah, the Psychic Screams and the Loot Hoarder are clogging up the space a little bit, but this is all the pieces that you need. You also kind of need a little bit of board space sometimes, too, but I don't think there's really much that No Hands Gamer can do about it. You can you try to sap. Sap, yeah. sap of course, grants the second Radiant Elemental, but again, hand space is, is a bit of an issue. And I think if this is the best chance you got, it's the best chance you got. Sap away. And no hands essentially all in at this point. There's no other cards really remaining in his hand. And Planet Hunter still needs that Divine Spirit. True name, play, and board state. Twilight's Call. Irrelevant. And without any way to heal, because the second Spirit Lash was ditched. I just don't know how the hand spacing issue with it works. I, I I feel like if you have ten cards in hand, it doesn't get done. He, he doesn't have divine spirit though. Oh, he doesn't have divine spirit. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? So what can he draw with the Witchwood Piper, for example, in this position? Is there even any minions left in the deck? I think it's just all it's spells. Oh, he's a radiant elemental. You're right. And a wild pyromancer, unless that's gone. No, nah, I don't think there's any way out here. You have best wow! Game three is done. Kingsbane Road comes through once again. It's just such a good deck at consistently outputting damage every single yeah. turn. And you know, the, think about how much how much work a Warlock does to get Gul'dan online so they can pay two mana every turn to deal three damage and gain three health. Kingsbane Rogue finds that more consistently it often finds it earlier on, and it gets way beyond three lifesteal pretty darn quickly. I, I think that King's Bane Rogue is the real deal. I think that deck is super strong, and when it gets rolling early, it is so hard to stop yeah. getting to that extra 40 health. So in effect, while you're getting set to 40, you're paying a lot of life to get to that point. So it's not quite the amount of healing uh, I think that is you know, a true heal to 40 would normally be. You know, something like Reno Jackson, you're fighting for that board the entirety of the time before Reno Jackson would hit. So when Reno healed for 24, that was a heal for 24. You were battling them the whole way. Cube Warlock, Warlock versus Maligos Druid. Maligos Druid from Planet Hunters, very much geared towards surviving and getting more card draw. Yeah, It's a little bit less on the actual meat. There's no Lich King, for example. Yeah, no Lich King. Uh, Floop is the only duplicate uh, effect in here. It's Malagos, Alexstrasza, Dream Piddle Florist, and two copies of Ferocious Howl uh, for that extra defense. And so in this matchup uh, against No Hands, the extra defense really plays a, a pretty, you know, insignificant role, I would say. You know, the bigger one is if No Hands gets one of those big cube chains going, that pressure is going to continue to hammer in turn after turn. Planet Hunter doesn't have a super good way to handle that. Um, so being able to cycle through them early, quite important. Uh, but overall, Planet Hunter, I think, would rather have like Faceless Manipulator or uh, you know a way to duplicate a Malagos yeah. to create bigger combo turns faster. We saw this with Viper and his deck list with double Faceless, double Dream Petal Florist. And it just gave him so much flexibility to put the Cube Warlock in a bad position to the point where it was almost inevitable. Like, it felt very close to a 90-10 matchup based off the way he was playing. Because Cube Warlock was, like, just trying to survive and, like, deal with the Dream Petal Florist. But it almost didn't matter because as long as Malagos gets discounted to two, you just win. <laughs> I mean, one of the big factors that's, you know, going to fight that, of course, is just Skull of the Minari. That's one of the bread and butter draws mm -hmm. in Cube Warlock. 
Um, so, you know, that alone has the power, I think, to, to manipulate the matchup numbers. Yeah, by a absolutely. Significant amount. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's no way to interact with a Doom Guard cube pop it turn if, if that's what you got in hand. So, uh, nice that's pickup. not there right now. And Planet Hunter finds Nourish with the Arcane Tyrant. Uh, and this is this is getting real scary real fast. That hand is so good looking. Is he thinking about playing the Arcane Tyrant number two? I think with a greedier list, you can justify it here. Uh, I think with a non-greedy list, it's much more difficult to do. But that being said, No Hands is you know going into a five mana turn with Coin. And Planet Hunter's going to be rolling into 8, 9, and 10, which is, you know, pretty much back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back turns of real pressure. Uh, with Alex Straza in hand, I think that the pressure means a lot less. Um, so I would tend to hold on to the floop here because uh, if it's necessity with Malagos sometimes. But I'm curious to see how this works out. I mean, wow. you know, minion free mana zero, you know, free mana three fours are still very threatening when you don't have anything on board. So I'm curious to see how this works. Mm. I would tend to hold it. Yeah, I feel like exactly what you're saying is is, is how I feel too. I, I don't know if I, I can get there if if I use the floop. I'm just really afraid. But he wants to value the pressure and I mean, it's true, Cube Warlock has lost a step or two, but this it's is, still got some pretty good defense. Yeah, and this is a bad turn for Planet Hunter. Like this is about as bad of a turn he gets. The best outcome for him right now on this turn would be to kill Possessed Lackey and then kill a Doom Guard. Should it come out? If a Void Lord comes out, though, your opponent's going to be able to set up with that Void Lord and start to take advantage of you. And at that point, there's a good chance you just get shredded. So, and that's why the attack comes first. But I don't know if the attack first is necessary or even really important in that stage. I guess I would take it because it's there. Um, but overall, this spot for Planet Hunter, you know, looking much worse after the Fluke comes out. And that's, you know, I think something that he wasn't really thinking about. Just how does it look when my opponent coins Lackey? You don't have to pop the Lackey the turn you play it against a deck that doesn't run Silence. Yep. Now I'm having a hard time imagining how Planet Hunter makes up that gap of 8 damage. He does have Ultimate Infestation to the face twice, but it's not like Q-Block can't heal. Like, Blood Reaver Goldan should be able to recover a lot of that uh, health and board position, even if you manage to wrest it away from the Cube Warlock. Yeah, and, you know, being spell stoning here to make hand space for Ultimate Infestation in the coming turns... This is a really feels bad kind of scenario where, um, you know, if had you not attacked with the four four, you would have been able to pop this, mm -hmm. and you have Alex Straza to make up the damage that right. you invested instead. So, you know, almost any way you slice it, the damage is uh, a little bit worse for Planet Hunter's side if he intends to spell stone this turn. Yeah. And so, no hands. You know, really the big factor now is going to be finding a way to take care of Twig after your opponent gets a bunch of combo damage rolling because he's very easily protected in this scenario. I believe No Hands runs a copy of Ooze in his uh, Cube Warlock. Yeah, Cube Warlock, it's extremely wow. standard to have Hold on. Uh, Ooze in the deck to so handle he Twig. He knows that he's playing an Ooze, and he also isn't playing any Faceless and or any other redundancy besides the Floop. No, I, th I think he's gotten a little bit over in his head on how he's going to finish this game. Well, you know, we talked about it at the start of this match, too. This is Planet Hunter's first live tournament that they've ever played. And I think in the prior sets we saw that, uh, you know, nerves were a bit of a factor in the matchup. It was some fairly sloppy Malagos Druid play where he's left stranded in some scenarios. Um, and Malagos Druid is a deck where if you're limited on damage and you toss any amount of that away, your damage, you know, cap becomes not really anything that's going to kill your opponent. So, oh my goodness, double Void Lord with two more Void Walkers coming out. Yeah, this is a uh, wow. Welcome to Umbra's Ark. <laughs> and they all come barreling two by two. Planet Hunter is in big trouble. He's going to have to ultimate infestation phase, but that's expecting your opponent to have no heal capabilities. Yeah, he, he landed on uh, he landed on Planet Void Lord right now and Planet Cube. So. But the Malagos double Moonfire is threatening lethal here. You know, this line did something to try to get it done. And there's the healing in uh, No Hand Gamer's deck is it's Zilliax, it's you know, four points from Dark Pact, it's Spellstone. And then it, it exists. I mean you have two Dark Packs in hand, and, and when you UI the phase, I think it's pretty clear what's happening. No hands also picks up the spellstone. And that plus the Voidwalker should just be able to clean up easily here. The 
Is he about to Hellfire? Okay. Oh, he's Dark Pack. Okay, I'm like, the way he's attacking, it makes like, are you about to Hellfire uh, Spellstone? Because that's pretty ambitious. Well, again, the actions are, are taken by, uh, you know, partially by Eyesight mm -hmm. uh, for No Hints Gamer. He's actually playing with No Hints. That's true. Again, there's just, that's partially why we explain it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think you're getting minion damage in for the rest of the game plan. Yeah, I'm and, sorry, man. And at 18, uh, it's you know it's just have to be a second swipe drawn, and then time as well. It's a possibility, I think, but very, very, very low. I think it's got to be like picture perfect every step. Well, I, I would say that the caveat was his one last chance would be something along the lines of Twig, but he doesn't even have that luxury anymore. Oh, yeah, Twig is, is way and gone. He so doesn't like, have the Dream Petal Florist, and if he played like Maligos, and then he had the Floop to do follow-up damage, he had to swipe Moonfire, Moonfire, and that's 19 damage. That, that's the thing, is, is the Dream Petal Florist is the next big one. So with Dream Petal Florist, uh, you're able to play it and discount the Maligos, but in order to do that, you need two turns to set up, and you need to draw it right away. He did draw it right away, and so the Malagos double Moonfire and then swipe as the 16th point of damage. Mm -hmm. A second swipe could make it 20. No hands can heal out of that. Yeah. Without the Dream Petal Florist draw that turn, I don't think it's there. Okay. So that's very fair to say. Planet Hunter can also shred down this board just a little bit. Voidler gets a lot weaker if there's just a full board because it only summons one single Void Walker re in return. Big Sludge Belcher. <laughs> okay, going to naturalize his own cube just so that he can get Void Lords out for himself and stop any damage. It's a clever way to buy time. But, you know, the time you buy for No Hands right now, he is totally comfortable with that right. because of Blood Reaver Gul'dan in hand. Exactly. Blood Reaver Gul'dan is going to shut out the opportunity for Planet Hunter to keep this push going. Oh, he can't necessarily make Void Lords, though, on the back of this. You know, the cubes can't actually kill themselves in this scenario. They have to, you know, No Hands would have to do something else in order to get this done. I don't know how this Godfrey works. I don't know if it kills everything. <laughs> I'm assuming it does because that's should. just how it works. Yeah, I'm God it. Godfrey kills off just like everything, always. Two, four, six, eight. Uh, oh, is there no eight? Right uh, it, it can. You one three trades into the Void Lord and it becomes an eight. Okay. Well, low hand heal up though. The way he's attacking makes it sound makes it look like he knows exactly how the trades go. And it seems pretty clean for the most part, because the Hellfire, Hellfire should wrap it up. Hellfire takes you to 18. It summons two more Void Lords. Your opponent has the Malagos Double Moonfire, which will drop you to six. And if yeah. they draw a second swipe on the back of that, and you're able to kill Malagos, you know, that's part of the kicker here, is you need to be able to kill Malagos, too. He has, uh, he has Godfrey. He should be able to kill Malagos. But here's, like, the thing. Like, Planet Hunter, next turn, can't really beat Blood River Gul'dan. Well, and he had this opportunity to drop Malagos into Flute for several turns had he kept it. So something I'm looking at here is if No Hands drops Blood River Gul'dan and then Planet Hunter uses Spreading Plague, can he protect for long enough to get the Malagos down and have the double swipe follow up? Okay. That's one possibility. I don't know. I mean, that's much easier said than done. <laughs> I personally think that he might have, like, I was trying to think about double swipe to the face this turn. Double swipe this turn, you but drop your if they to drop, 10. Yeah, and he just goes back to 15. Yeah, it's the Blood Reaver Gul'dan is the, like, you. Okay, so what if you UI the face, put him to 13. Then your opponent goes back up to 18, and then you double swipe, and then he bites, and he goes back to 13. It's the same thing. He's going to be out of range no matter what you do. Yeah, so he's going to draw instead. I think that this is okay because it looks like he's going for the second spreading plague spot and the dream petal florist. Okay, florist is nice. You know the fact that it's it's a board full of void walkers and that nothing is juiced on the Gul'dan, Maybe there's a way that Planet Hunter still gets this done. Well, right now, if you have double swipe and moon fires, that's actually 30 damage. So it's all about can no hands survive until that 30 damage break when he's at 23. No, he cannot. I mean, that's two turns away. Goes to 20. So he needs to pick up one more heal. There's a second plague there. The second plague is really big. I don't. 
I don't think there's another heal left in the deck that, that's substantial. Zilliax. You got a board space. None of your minions die. Kill your own 1-3. So you, you would use the Gul'dan suck on the 1-3, play the Zilliax that gains you six total health from 23. Playing it, Hunter's gonna win. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Malagos Drew is so nuts. The Void Lords were just not enough to pressure Planet Hunter. That was really a big thing about this. Alex Straza kept no hands on the back foot. You know, I'm curious if, if with the Blood Reaver Gul'dan, No Hands is supposed to just like never tap and try to keep as high a life total as possible. Yeah, that's also a re very reasonable assumption. It's also kind of mind blowing that Warlock just hit 10 mana. I feel like this game has been going on for a while where Drew has had 10 mana for several turns now. Wow. That's it. No more heal. But hey, that Dark Pack nerf made a pretty big difference because it would be at 34 right yep. now. Dark Pack. Uh, rip Dark Pack. <laughs> it's still played. I think it's, still it's played. a completely appropriate nerf it's, based off what happened. It, it, I think it's an appropriate nerf as well, but this Malagos nonsense keeps happening. And honestly, it's Malagos to me that's the egregious offender of this combination. I mean, I think it's Dream Petal Forest that really allows this kind of stuff to happen. <laughs> You also ask me. Without Malagos, how do you buff this damage? You have to like, gonk or something to get this done. Yeah, but they they would just find some other spell damage target to reduce down to zero. Yeah, damage. I'm just saying, I it, gonking this would be fun, and I want to see that. You have to have a lot of life to gonk it. We did see gonk uh, Druid go pretty far in this tournament, top eight. Holy smokes. Game five coming up as Planet Hunter evens it up, and we're going to EPM Priest versus Cube Warlock. Which is uh, actually the co just don't get pummeled by a single mountain giant <laughs> that can crush you. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a, a great opening hand for Planet Hunter so far. You want the death rattles, and you. Oh, oh I thought, I thought it was that was Twilight Skull. Skull. Okay, <laughs> Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> it's like the death grip and uh, the obliterate. Oh, you mean the, the same death card? card. <laughs> the death knight cards. They're both just like ominously purple. I. You can never tell the difference in death grip and obliterate. It's impossible. Especially if it's a gold version. <laughs> the golden cards, I do admit, with the animations, it sometimes looks very it's ambiguous. Just those two. And I, I want to see, I want to see Planet Hunter earn it, but I also kind of wanted the feel-good story of No Hands taking it. This, is, this is such a hype finals. This where it's is like pretty good. Cube Warlock is like a deck that went through the ringer where nerfs were concerned. It's the dead ringer. It suffered through. <laughs> It suffered through so many bad situations where it was sitting out in the meta game, and now that uh, it's we're just in the Rostakons Rumble meta and everything's shaping up, there are so few purely aggressive decks that Cube Warlock has the time mm -hmm. to continue to try and reign supreme again. This is a fantastic finals. It's 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 so funny. It's kind of gone through a little Jade Druid treatment where like it first came out and everyone was like, "Wow, that's pretty cool," and then it, and then it became really good and it was like, "Wow, that's kind of oppressive." So it got nerfed. <laughs> And then it went through a period where no one played it. And then so when Renman brought it to champs, everyone's like, wow, that's actually kind of cool again. And then now it's like Roscon's Rumble where like, oh, now it's just very solid and I respect this deck. Yeah. And it's, just, it's gone through all kinds of phases of appreciation. Yeah, you're seeing one of the tricks here that you have in the slower matchups with Topsy Priest is you get the Vivid Nightmare to create duplicates of it while mm -hmm. at the same time making some amount of progress on your quest, on, on your quest here. So, uh, oh, Topsy drawn as well. So now, Planet Hunter can topsy one of the minions, get a Vivid Nightmare back, and could continue to go through Vivid Nightmare iterations. It's a way to spend your mana, but it's not a great way to address the Mountain Giant. I think he has to trade in this to uh, this loot hoarder first. Dead Ringer. That's a great draw. There's one loot hoarder left, I believe. I think so. Might be correct on that. So we have one Dead Ringer down. We have Blood Maid's Thousand in hand. We have both test subjects. And one loot order. We have a loot hoarder down. Yeah, there's one death rattle left in the deck for Dead Ringer. Wait, it's the other Dead Ringer. Yeah, loot hoarder. There we go. Oh, it's the other Dead Ringer. Yeah. yeah. But now uh, Planet Hunter's doing a, a trick that exactly we were talking about, which is recycling those vivid nightmares. And now he's going to get four back <laughs> if both of these test subjects die. Which is always a really funny thing, and there's got to be a weird yeah. way to kill him with just a bunch of blood mages. <laughs> blood mages and a smite—that's what I want to see. 
I mean, if you really think about it, five Blood Mages is basically Malagos. Uh, uh, yeah, it, Malagos is insane. That's really yeah. the. That's really what I'm hearing. That's, I mean, stuff like this is why the deck is so wide open. And so No Hands is, first of all, he's trying to decipher what on earth is happening in Planet Hunter's side. Well, and then he's saying, wait, what do I do? Do I just establish the, at, do I faceless this? Yes! And just go as ham as I can? If you are if you faceless, there's a chance that Mass Hysteria leaves you with two eight sixes. Yes, unless the test subjects hug the Mountain Giants first. Yes, but... I mean, Zilliax, you don't need the life total. Yeah, I, I like the Mountain Giant plan. I want to pressure them as best as I can. You know, But he's killing off the test subject because he doesn't trust it. Well, No Hands clearly is you know, fearing something. And that could be part of the, like, the plan for No Hands Gambling, too. It's like, you know, this nonsense starts happening. You start oh. getting nervous about it. You're like, I don't know what they're up to. I don't know how to figure it out. I'm going to kill a test subject and hope that whatever they're trying to do doesn't happen. So with this draw... Planet Hunter is missing one Divine Spirit and three Mana Crystals, and he has lethal. He's a boar. But he can finish the quest next turn. If he just plays the Vivid Nightmare. Yeah, I, I think this was foolish from No Hands Gamer, because if he uses the Faceless Manipulator on the Mountain Giant, he's representing 16 plus 5 with the Doom Guard. And that's also and then basically it, lethal. Yeah, and then if your opponent like Psychic Screams or does whatever, you have Hellfire to finish it off. And so... You know, the timing pressure I may agree. still be identical here for No Hands Gamer. Um, and also, with the two Vivid Nightmares stuffed inside of the test subject right now, Dead Ringer and the two Vivid Nightmares coming back from test subject threatens to burn cards on Planet Hunter's side. So the Zilliax has a lot of merits in terms of, like, starting to get that chain going, but I think I still just like the Faceless Manipulator to force that pressure as hard as possible. Agreed. I also wonder if Planet Hunter's going to invest in another Vivid Nightmare because it does clog up the hand. Okay, this is actually fairly clever because there's only one. Oh, uh, that's that, that still causes a a burn, I believe. There's one. No, Dead Ringer won't. The only one of them will draw. Is the that other the other one won't draw? Is there one Dead Ringer left in deck, or is that? Oh, yeah, actually, good question. Yeah, I think it's one Dead Ringer, one Loot Hoarder left in deck. <sighs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I think that's what we were talking about before. Dead Ringer draws the other Dead Ringer. Drawing that Divine Spirit would be pretty devastating if yeah. he burns that. And so now with the skull, the faceless plus the Doomguard represents ten more from hand on the following turn. Yes, and that's that would be lethal. Well, it's one off in that situation. You are correct. Assuming nothing else survives. Yeah, I'm assuming something happens to the board uh, when that takes place. I think he's assuming it too, but Planet Hunter hasn't really demonstrated an ability to do so. But he also has the ability to finish the quest this turn. Yeah, but you have to play the test subject to play the Amara this yeah, turn as well. that's not great. But, but you can heal up as well. There's so. also a lot of test subjects in the pool, and I don't know if that affects the <laughs> outcomes from Twilight's call or not. That's right. We don't know the math on that either. Because, like, it... There's it, no I, controlled proven math. Right. We don't know if it takes things individually just by unique examples or by how many are total in the pool. Now, from everything I've heard, it's... I think it's from I think each, it's total. It's from each individual one. So that would mean uh, like really? if there's six copies of something, it counts six copies. But you can summon the same thing twice. Exactly. So it's each individual one, not each unique uh, title uh, of a card. So I think okay. it does account for it, but I've never seen like a like a proof of work that shows that. But I think Blood Mage Spirit Lash is enough to keep you safe. That's uh, ten extra health. He is also kind of going to overdraw on resources, though, right? If he does this, he might have to Spear Slash again just to dump a card. Hand is too full. Oh, he lost the second Topsy-Turvy. And now that's the final Death Rattle in the deck, I believe. I don't right. think that will not draw a card. 10, 13 damage. Like a cube. Oh, uh, like a, sorry, so close. Dark Pact would have been? Yeah, Dark Pact would have been it. It's not really about the Void Lord any anymore. It's really about the pressure. I mean, Planet Hunter's about I, to go back to 40. How do you set up the best turn you can? Seven is still completely okay to deal with um, because your opponent won't be able to combo you. Okay, if this is the case, 
you go for the faceless, and then you just double hellfire. This should be a lethal setup here. But then the Amara, the Amara. I mean. It's you know for for no hands right now. It's just about setting up as strong into Amara as possible. How long? Oh man. If that's is it, the Ziliax has really c come to b haunt him right now. Because because the thing about it is he is free to trade in this spot as well. And uh, in this spot, if it's well, no, he's not free to trade because now Psychic Scream is enough to right. protect the Hellfires. So that attack there, that could be a super costly attack, and that tells me mm -hmm. No Hands has not been keeping track uh, of the, of of the, death the rattles, amount yeah. of death uh, rattles left in deck. Um, is there anything he couldn't see? The second test subject. He would. He did not technically have knowledge of. I don't think. No, I, I think you're right. I, I think he probably he doesn't see the second test subject in hand. I don't know when that exactly that got drawn, and I'm not going to focus on that. What I'm looking at now is that Planet Hunter hesitated very little into playing this Amara this turn. Um, Rightfully so. Yeah, it's you know, for No Hands, the way that he attacked Psychic Scream was a defensive option if it was in hand for Planet Hunter. I also misspoke when I said uh, they just needed one more card for the combo. Planet Hunter actually needs Stone Toast 4 and Divine Spirit. And that's why this Loot Holder is so important, because if it draws one of the pieces, or if it, it help can it can basically help you draw both pieces and then finish the game. Is there like a weird like Taldoram, the 8-8 eight eight cube, the Taldoram play that gets you two 8-8s? Eight <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know if that's... It might be worse than just pressure. I mean, this has got to just be better, right? Oh, I mean, gold man. out of hand. You just want to stack Doom Guards in the pool, yeah. right? Yeah, no, you definitely do. Even cubing your, your Doom Guard puts another Doom Guard in the pool. Yeah, I'm thinking cubing the Doom Guard here is. I like it. Pretty solid. Yep. Next turn, you have the attack double Hellfire. That's 12 plus 6. That's 18 plus Second two attacks. From, oh, wait but, a minute. This is potentially setting up lethal here for No Hands Gamer. Planet Hunter has to do something about the life total. Or otherwise, No Hands Gamer has lethal with the double Hellfire and the two Doom Guards packed in the cube. Yeah, I think he'll be okay. The, the problem is now that Planet Hunter needs to draw other pieces of the combo, but he's got like a bunch of Vivid Nightmares in Twilight's Call. And Twilight's Call can summon back Dead Ringers that don't do anything. So, I think his best chance might be to, like, Vivid Nightmare and Spirit Lash, and then, like, draw cards off of it. I restore four health, or three health. Oh, no, four. You got to go 31. Your health total yep. gets set to exactly. 40, so you have a new maximum cap. I think he wonders if he wants one more card to cycle another Vivid Nightmare because you don't need this other this you don't need the second Vivid Nightmare because you have two Radiance now. Also, like, do you want Twilight's Call first? Like, is that ever relevant? That's also a good point. I like Twilight's Call a little better. It's one extra health. He just draws for two cards. Divine Spirit. Shadow Visions. He doesn't have the boar. He has to draw boar, and there's there's uh, twelve Scream. cards left in deck. Thirty one. I think he needed to dig deeper, Admirable. This is 28 damage available for No Hands Gamer this turn, and Gul'dan's coming down on the following turn. For No Hands Gamer, this is an attack. You double Hellfire, you jam it face, and hope that the Gul'dan can end it afterwards. If Planet Hunter had chose to draw another card there via the Twilight's Call, it could have cost him. If he chose to draw via Vivid Nightmare, which he didn't need, I think it could have gotten there. What's he going to do with these extra Vivid Nightmares? He doesn't need it. In order to finish the combo, you only need one. Oh boy. Oh boy. Planet Hunters down to three. It's got to be bored. It's got to be bored now. There's 12 cards. 9%. Not a bore. No. Scream's not enough. That, that pool is nothing but Doom Guards right now. You needed to go one card deeper. Although we, we wouldn't, I mean, I guess hindsight tells us that uh, it would have been Psychic Scream anyways. Well, he would have drawn another card this turn, though, right? Like, that was the third card in line. It would have been one more. As far as I know, there's no way for this to happen. 
I'm not seeing it either, Admirable. I think No Hands has put Planet Hunter into checkmate. And he's also ran out of time to even try to make a miracle happen. I mean, there's sometimes some very sh ridiculous shenanigans that happen. Scream and heal and a smile from No Hands Gamer. He knows that Blood Reaver Gul'dan's going to close it and make him the Hearthstone Championship Tour Philadelphia Tour Stop Champion. Three games to two, a grueling day, a grueling weekend, and a grueling five-game set. Very well done to secure this lethal. Well played all around. No hands is your champion, and it's very heartwarming for many reasons. One, showing you that Hearthstone can be played even if you don't have everything lined up conveniently. You don't have to necessarily even play with your hands. Uh, also, a local talent. Very nicely done, uh, and I think a lot of people draw inspiration from that. All right, so a lot of congratulations. Thank this you. Is uh, probably the biggest win of your career, is it not? Uh, yeah, it's, there's no probably, you know, <laughs> I think it's the biggest win, yeah. Now, I, I saw you in the semifinals, and right after that win in the semifinals that, yeah. you know, advanced you to the finals, uh, you were very nervous. You were kind of a mm -hmm. little bit, you know, sh I don't know if it was shock or what it was, yeah. but it took some time for you to sort of calm down. Now, how did what did you do between the, between the semis and the finals that geared you up for this match? Uh, I mean, I have, like, Breathing strategies. I'm deep, deep breathing, deep breaths, lowering my heart rate, uh, just trying to focus and t tune out anything but the match, you know? And at the race to the end of that one, the f fifth game, it's only fitting that such an amazing weekend comes down to five games of the final. Uh, when you figured it out, when you see the lethal, when you know <laughs> that you've won, is it just a matter of making sure that you click the right cards and putting them down? or You're, you're partially afraid, like it's going to be the one game where you don't click Blood Reaver Gul'dan, but, you know, when he wasn't. You know, on turn nine, he, I was waiting for him to play the combo because I knew I had him if he didn't do it. And, you know, 15 seconds in, I'm just like, I got him. You know, even if he starts it, he won't be able to finish it in it's time. It's a race so. against the clock yeah. against Tachi Turkey yeah. Priest. And you won that race, my friend. And that's not all you won. You also won $5,000, which we very conveniently uh, decoupaged into these flowers. I hope you don't mind, my friend. Uh, I'm kidding. $5,000. Besides the cash, there's HTT points on the line. Congratulations to you, my friend. And I want to say, you. again, one quick word of thanks to uh, Linode, our feature sponsor. Linode is a virtual, come here, well, let's okay. do this together. Linode. Linode. <laughs> Linode is a virtual private uh, server provider based in Philadelphia. High performance SSD Linux servers for all of your infrastructure needs. I bet all of them. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> there, none of them <laughs> will go unneeded. Uh, so cloud hosting for developers, designers, your ideas. And you, my friend. So congratulations to No Hands Gamer. My name is Flake. It's been my privilege and honor to be able to host this event for you guys. Be kind to one another. We're going to kick it off to Froden and Admirable. Thanks again to Dr. J as well. Adios. Have a good one. See you very